my name is Caroline Crawford. I am so excited to be here with y'all tonight at the first Empower Her Hour of the semester of this year. Here we go. Uh, I will say that we are in person. However, we have done a little um, making it happen here. So we will be sending you the slides afterwards. So if at any moment you're like, Caroline, I cannot see the slides. Just listen, I will share everything and then I will send them to you. It will all be good, okay? I am really excited you decided to spend Monday evening with me. Um, my background is that I am a licensed master social worker. So if you know who Brene Brown is, she's my queen, we love her. Um, but that's what I get to do. And then I'm also a certified positive psychology coach. And so let's get started, are y'all ready? Yes, I know we're very virtual and all I see is blank screen. So I'm just going to imagine Tessa saying yes. So everyone is saying yes, let's go. All right, next slide. So as y'all know, it's uh, a new semester, new mindset, the science of creating your own happiness. And I wanted to make sure before we really got too deep into the subject that we went over a couple of things. So my expertise is in three areas, positive psychology, emotional intelligence, and self-compassion. And these are things that I've dedicated my life to and what I've built my business around. And so sometimes when I say these words, people are like, I think I know what that means. Or they're like, I definitely know what that means. Or they're like, I don't know anything about that. So I just want to make sure we like level set to start. So first, positive psychology. Often people think when they hear positive psychology, they go straight to toxic positivity, which do any of you know what toxic positivity is? Yeah, yeah, no, no, maybe, maybe. Uh, it's basically the belief that everything is happy, everything is fine, we will sweep things under the rug, we will pretend, we will never talk about anything real because we are solution focused and we're smiling all the time. Now that's exhausting and I'm a clinical social worker, so it is not okay not to process your feelings. And so the difference between that type of toxic positivity and positive psychology is that positive psychology says, hey, you have feelings, things are hard. Sometimes you're pissed off, sometimes you're frustrated, sometimes you're grieving or embarrassed or jealous or have shame. And that's okay. because we're human. But we still have hope that it can be better. We have hope that we can move forward. And so it's validating and understanding those emotions while also looking to what can we hope for. The other thing that I'm an expert in is in emotional intelligence. Um, I'll tell you all a quick story. I grew up with a sister. Her name's Elizabeth. And Elizabeth and I, our father wanted to give us compliments, and he was very validating in that way. One thing he did all the time was he said, oh, I have a daughter with the IQ, Elizabeth, and a daughter with the EQ, me. And I was like, hey, wait a second. Yes, I do have high emotional intelligence. Thank you very much. But I also have high EQ. And so I, uh, IQ, and I started really thinking about what are those labels? What do those labels mean? And so when we are kids and when we are growing up, sometimes compliments stick with us and become our identity. And so I actually dove deep into emotional intelligence, trying to really understand what that means. And you may not be able to see it on the slide, but underneath emotional intelligence, it says, I feel, therefore I am. And many of us have heard the saying, I think, therefore I am. However, Emily and Amelia Nagasaki in their book, Burnout, if you haven't read it, read it. We'll do a follow-up with some book lists because I'm a major theory nerd. Um, but what they found was that actually it is our hormones that get released before any thought enters our mind, which means we're actually feeling first in any situation. And then we over-intellectualize it and we create meaning and we add ideas and words to what those feelings are. But emotional intelligence is ultimately just saying, I am an emotional being and that's okay. I want to know my emotions. I want to be self-aware of them. I want to have empathy and understand other people's emotions. I recognize that the way we communicate, the way we negotiate, the way we interact is all based on this emotional intelligence. And then finally, there's self-esteem versus self-compassion. Um, I told you that Brene Brown is one of my queens. Another one of my queens is Dr. Kristen Neff, and she's actually out of UT. Some of you maybe have taken a class with her. If you have, I'm extremely jealous. Um, but basically, the idea of self-esteem is that it's a rating. 
it's either we have high self-esteem or we have low self-esteem. It's that all of these external factors affect our self-esteem. And so if we go into class and our professor looks at us as like, you've done a great job today. And your friend looks at you and they're like, I love that outfit. And you're walking down and you're like, oh my gosh, and I just got this job I wanted. My self-esteem would be out of control. But if you woke up late and you're like running to class and you drip coffee all over you and you're like, oh no, and you walk into class and your professor's like, hey, we have a pop quiz today to do study. And you're like, oh, I didn't do it. And then you're walking down the street and everyone just starts going, boo. Your self-esteem would be really low. And so self-compassion is the idea. It is the idea to say, hey, instead of looking externally for the things that make you feel good about yourself, start looking internally. And we're gonna start with self-compassion. But before we move there, I just wanna make sure to recognize when we talk about a new mindset, when we talk about creating joy, it's really thinking about one, that emotional intelligence to understand what are the emotions coming up for me? How can I name them? And do I have the power to rewrite them? It's saying, hey, if there's positive psychology out there. We can find hope, even though we're acknowledging the pain. But it all starts with first me being loving to myself and me being kind to myself. And so self-compassion really is the fundamental or the bricks at the bottom of the building as you start to build up that mindset, as you start to say, wait a second, I can create joy for myself. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, and I just have to say it really loud, is what I am talking about are those daily interactions. It's the daily stuff that like, oh, things are rough, things are hard, things are exhausting. I wanna really acknowledge that there are trauma and there are things out there that sometimes your mindset isn't gonna be the thing that fixes it. Sometimes you need more help than that. And so I don't wanna discredit anyone. What I'm really speaking to is when you wake up in the morning and you've got things going on and you have those daily tasks, how can you say, what's the story I'm telling myself? And is it the story I want to be telling myself? Is it the story that produces the most joy? And we can move to the next slide. All right, so we're at self-compassion. And there are three tenets of self-compassion. Again, Dr. Kristen Neff came up with this research and she did a ton of it. And what she found is people who practice self-compassion have less jealousy, less reactive anger, that they are more collaborative, more communicative. And not only are they more loving to self, but they're more loving to others. And I'm like, check, 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 sign me up for all of that. Especially that less reactive anger. I don't know if y'all been in traffic lately, but like, <laughs> And so these three tenets are important to really dig into because the first one, be kind to yourself. How many of you kind of want to roll your eyes and like, oh, okay, really I'm logging this soon for this woman to tell me to be kind to myself? Cool, 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 cool. Right? People have been telling us that forever. But is it really what we do? And are we actually auditing our thoughts? And when I say be kind to ourselves, I'm thinking about how would a best friend talk to me? And so if I was walking in and I found out I got an F on a test, it was a test I really studied for. It was one that was really important to me. It was one I really wanted to make an A. And my best friend looked at me and said, oh, it's all right, Caroline. Like, I'm going to help you study next time. Like, she gives me a hug. She's like, let's go. We can do this. Let's go for a walk. Let's talk it out. Where do you think you went wrong? How can I help you? You want to make flashcards? I'll buy you flashcards, girl, right? And I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you, best friend. Because that's how a best friend would talk to me. And yet, when I first got that grade, sometimes my brain gets ahead of myself. And sometimes I'll say, God, you're such an idiot, Carolyn. Of course this happened to you. Of course you couldn't even do this. You stayed up all night. Why weren't you studying three weeks in advance? You should have been doing more. Why weren't you doing more? You're so worthless. And all of a sudden for this external thing, I'm questioning my own worthiness. And this can happen in all sorts of situations with body image, with beauty, with friendships, with relationships, all of those places where that inner critic can get really loud. And how often we just let that inner critic go. 
it makes me think about, I don't know if y'all have seen uh, The Grinch, Dr. Seuss's The Grinch. I love it. And at one point when he's like sitting in his cave like this and he's like, you're an idiot. And the cave responds, I'm an idiot. Instead of echoing, you're an idiot too. It's that voice in our head that's just sometimes mean. And so that first tenant is saying, hey, it's time for an audit. It's time to say, where exactly am I being kind and where am I being cruel? Am I being an inner critic or am I being an inner cheerleader? If I said the things out loud to my best friend that sometimes I say to myself, would they still be my best friend? I have Ashley in the room with me and I can only imagine if I looked at Ashley and was like, oh, you made an F, you deserve it, you're an idiot. Ashley probably would be like, nah, girl, we're not friends anymore. Y'all can't see her, but she's nodding. Because a best friend would say, Ashley, you got this. I believe in you. I know you can do it. You had a hard day. You're going to work harder next time. You got this. And so how do we start saying that to ourselves? How do we truly audit? The second pillar is recognize our shared humanity. This is one I love. And this is one I think about often in HEB. And I'll tell you why. I hate grocery shopping. I absolutely hate it. Like, no, thank you. Uh, it's like, I, when I have to do it, it feels like pulling teeth out. But ultimately, I need groceries. So I go grocery shopping. And I often try to get in and get out. I don't know if anyone else out there is a get in, get out kind of grocery shopping person, but that's who I am. And so sometimes I run in, I only need two or three things. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Here I go. I got my shopping cart. I'm going, oh, this is fun. And now I'm going back this way and I've got other things. And now I'm just dancing for y'all. Okay. And I'm like, it's time to check out. Well, I only have two or three things. I can go 15 items or less. And so I walk over that 15 items or less and the person in front of me, that's right. I start counting and they have 32 items. And I can just feel this frustration. And I'm smiling because I'm not saying anything, but I can feel that frustration rising. And this tenet of recognized shared humanity is saying, hey, when that frustration is rising in you, are you actually seeing the human? And so I play this game with myself now, and this happens in traffic too, where I have to say, okay, I wonder what's going on in that person's life. I wonder why they need to go get through HEB quicker than me. I wonder if maybe they're taking care of an elderly parent or maybe they're working their second job. Uh, maybe someone's watching a child at home and they've got to get back as soon as possible. And as soon as I make up just one, maybe two, maybe three scenarios in my head, all of a sudden that anger and that frustration start to calm because I'm recognizing our shared humanity. I have a very literal story of this too. On 35, this was back before the pandemic. And I don't know if y'all remember 35 being just like out of control. You would sit there for so long. And I would get all of this anger and I'm like yelling explicit. Like my windows are up and I'm just yelling. And I'm like, who am I yelling at? No one can hear me. And really it felt like the incredible Hulk was like gonna come out. And I was like, ah. And then by the time I would get home, I would be so stressed up. I'll be so angry. My partner, my poor partner would get the brunt of all this anger that came from nothing. What I already knew to be true is that I'm going to sit in traffic. And so I started recognizing shared humanity. And I kid you not, y'all, I decided to try a little experiment. And I was driving down 35. And every time we had to stop or we were sitting in traffic, I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to dance. And I would start dancing. And I'd like dance to the music. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was doing that alone. And then kind of like still I could feel the anger. And I'm like trying to dance all the anger. I'm like, this isn't really working. And so then I just started awkwardly staring at people through their windows while I was dancing. To be like, yeah, yeah, you want to dance with me? I got a few people who flipped me off. But mostly people would start dancing. And I was like, oh, you are angry too. You don't want to be here. And I just had the power to spread joy to you, which then in turn spread joy to me. And I kid you not, one time I was doing it and an 18 wheeler came by and he honked twice. And it was like, I felt like a seven year old again on a road trip. And I'm like, the 18 wheeler honked. And I was so pumped and I got home and I like opened the door and I was telling my partner, I was like, this is incredible, an 18 wheeler honk. And he was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> but I felt joy instead of anger. 
And it was all just a decision that I made. And so that's recognizing our shared humanity, that in any given situation, someone else is experiencing something too. And so that first one is be kind to yourself. Talk to yourself the way a best friend would. The second is recognize shared humanity. And then finally, hold negative thoughts in a mindful awareness. I love that I have this because it's like the best way to show y'all. If you remember on Sesame Street, maybe, where like a song would come on and then the words would come over and like this and the words would come over and you could follow along with the words. Well, I like to think about that with my negative thoughts. And so let's go back to, I'm frustrated. I just got that F. And my first thought is like, oh, Carolyn, you're an idiot. Well, I can actually hold that and I see the words like Sesame Street. I see the words in my hands and I get to choose. Do I want to make meaning out of that? Is that the way my best friend would speak to me? Have other people made Fs before? And all of a sudden I can choose to say, I want to let that go. I want to let it go. And so you can hold your negative thoughts and your thoughts and your emotions only have meaning because you choose to create meaning around them. And it's not to say that they are not valid, that they don't need to be processed, that you don't need to talk and talk and talk. I'm like, communication, if anything, like I'm waving my flag, you can't see me here, there it is. I'm waving my flag for communication. But if you can hold your negative thoughts and start to audit yourself and say, am I being an inner critic or am I being an inner cheerleader? So when we get to that place, this is really the foundation of creating joy, right? Is that first it starts with self-compassion and self-love. You've got to be gentle with yourself and curious with yourself. I don't know if y'all are Ted Lasso fans. That's my Roy Kent. Um, but be a curious, not judgmental. And so often the hardest people that we judge is ourselves. And so how can we get curious with ourselves? How can we get curious with others by recognizing their humanity? How can we hold our thoughts and not negative thoughts and mindful awareness and just say, do I want that in my brain or not? And then finally, how do we start to treat ourselves like our own best friend? And so once we start to get those pillars, we can start to create and generate joy, which is pretty incredible. Now, this is a hard practice, just like yoga or tennis or piano or I don't know what all the hobbies TikTok dances, uh, you got to practice. You're not going to just do it right off the bat. And one way to practice is through growing in your practice. And so we can go to the next slide. And so we want to start growing. And I know that some of you may not be able to see the slide. Again, I will send these afterwards, okay? But Carl Rogers, he was a humanistic psychologist. And one thing he said is, we all want to self-actualize. We want to know, am I worthy? And it may be, am I worthy of being a good daughter? Am I worthy of being a great friend? Am I worthy of love? Am I worthy of success? Am I worthy of intellect? We all have these different things and our intersections and our identities really play a part in one of those questions. But ultimately we are all asking that question, am I worthy? But you can imagine self-compassion really helps with that question when we start to feel like we aren't. And he said, for you to self-actualize, you have to grow, you have to reflect. And you need three things to grow. If you actually want to change, you actually want to build bridges, if you actually want to start to get to that next iteration, or if any of you are like Mario people, like we want to level up, you know? And so there are three things, genuineness, acceptance, and empathy. We want to be genuine in those things. We want to have openness and self-disclosure. This is a really cool institute. This is a place that says we want the women on our campus and female identifying students on our campus and our non-binary students on our campus to feel a space where they are can grow in a space that is genuine, that they are open and they are open to hear self-disclosures, that they are accepting to be seen with unconditional positive regard. And when I say positive regard, it doesn't mean that you always agree with the person. It means that you can create a space that they can share something without being judged. And then finally, empathy, truly being understood and listened to. The ability to, to say, I want to sit here. And it's not about the golden rule. Some of us heard the golden rule growing up. I know I did treat others the way you want to be treated. Well, that's not really empathy. 
because if I'm a hugger and Ashley's not a hugger and I'm just like, I'm just going to keep hugging her, I'm just making her uncomfortable. <laughs> so the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. And again, we're back to curiosity because I can say, Ashley, do you like hugs? Yeah. And she does. So now I can give her that. And that's what empathy is all about, is figuring out what the other person wants, what the other person needs, how you can show up for them. And so we want to start growing. We want to self-actualize. And so, so far, I've given you a lot of like meta stuff, right? Like here is self-compassion. Here's self-actualization. What am I supposed to do with that, Caroline? I am a college student. I have a million things going on. Ah, next slide. So. I wrote this out, again, you may not be able to see it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and read it to y'all. When we start growing, it's important, but in our environment, that growth can become another to-do list. Do I have any perfectionists or task-oriented people here? Yeah, where sometimes mental health or self-care just becomes like, oh, I'll just add it to my list. Like, check, I got a pedicure. Check, I ate some ice cream. And it's like, hmm, is that actually taking care of yourself? We can become obsessed with just the check of it, the outcome of it, instead of the actual reflection. And the reflection is the most important part. Reflecting back on what you learn, what your strengths are, what your values are, what you had in that moment, what self-compassion you gave to yourself or what self-compassion you could give more of. And so we rarely make time for it. And I have one of my favorite things that I share with almost all my clients, and it's what I want to share with y'all tonight, is as we're growing in self-compassion, as we start to look at those three pillars and say, yes, I want to hold negative thoughts and mindful awareness. I want to recognize shared humanity. I want to be kinder to myself because I know I will feel more joyful. But Caroline, how do I do that when I do have a total long list of things to do? I don't have enough capacity. And so Seligman, who is the father of positive psychology, came up with this really cool model. It's called PERMA. And what he found as he had more and more people experiment and work with this model, that they were finding a life of more fulfillment and more happiness and more meaning, which ultimately is joy. And it's all through reflection. And so we're going to take a look at PERMA now. So the P is for positive emotion, the E is for engagement, the R is for relationship, the M is for meaning, and the A is for accomplishments. And what this means, and what I think is like the easiest way to kind of start diving into positive psychology, if you're like, Caroline, I am so tired of being blah, I'm so tired of being stressed out, I'm so tired of feeling like all I do is school, 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 or work, 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 work. I need to start to feel like I can have a little bit more of me or a little bit more of my identity or a little bit more understanding or that self-actualization. PERMA is a great prompt for you. And that's really where I would start with this is if you have a journal or even in your notes on your phone where you can start to write out that P, that E, and we're about to go through each letter, that R, that M, and that A. And how do you reflect back on the day? Whether it's with your coffee in the morning, at the end of the day, maybe it's a conversation with a friend every Sunday evening, I don't know. But how do you start today saying, I want to feel better. Here is a proven way to feel better. I'm going to do it. Here I go. This is a new semester, new mindset. So let's start with that P. Positive emotion. It's the ability to remain optimistic and hopeful, acknowledging one's past, present, and future. What does that sound like? Ultimately, just positive psychology, being hopeful. And one thing to think about with positive emotion, it doesn't have to always just be like that giddy, I don't know what to do with my hands, oh my God, just got a raise, or like I just got an A. Like it doesn't have to be that like the best positive emotion. One piece that I always think about is I have a dog and the way my dog lays on her back and she just does her all fours belly up and then like has her tail wagging every time it makes me laugh. Like I just laugh so hard. She looks like a Muppet and it is beautiful. And she is giving me positive emotion. It can be any little positive emotion, but how do you make sure to note it and reflect on it? The next one, again, I'll send you these slides. I see that they're getting a little light is engagement. 
Engagement is the flow. It stretches our intelligence, our mental, emotional well-being, and our skill set. Engagement is flow. If you've ever heard of flow, it is the best. It's when you're so involved in something that you lose track of time, that you find a new sense of energy that you didn't even know was there. And often we can have little tiny moments of engagement that we don't even reflect on during the day, or sometimes we have really intense moments of engagement. And so one of the first times I ever got to speak, this was years ago now, I remember someone handing me the microphone and I just started talking. And all of a sudden everybody was clapping and I was like, oh, it's over. Oh my gosh. I got through all of my slides. It's been an hour. I was like, I am deep in flow right now. This feels really good. But sometimes engagement may be with a hobby, with a craft. Uh, when you're doing something mindful, when you're coloring in a coloring book, sometimes it can just be a deep, meaningful conversation with a friend where you've been talking, talking like, oh my God, we just talked for an hour and a half. I don't know if that's ever happened, but it happens to me all the time. So finding those moments of engagement and then again, reflecting on it. The reflection is the most important piece. Then we have relationships. And it's the desire to positively connect and need for healthy relational well-being. And I just want to make sure for this one, we meet so many people. We say, hello, hi, how are you? We sit in class, we walk by them on the sidewalk. You know, we have interactions. And so when we're reflecting back on the R of the PERMA, on the R of relationships, it is not just those head nods, sup, sup, how are you? We're looking for an authentic connection. A moment where you felt like it was the real deal. Where you're like, yes, that was a good conversation or that person really heard me or when I said how are you they didn't just say fine they're like actually I feel like I'm drowning I have so much work and you're like oh my gosh me too and you had that real moment of connection and relationship that authenticness sometimes we have to wear a lot of masks or wear a lot of hats depending I'm this person with this person and I'm that person with this person and it's what are the relationships where you can take all that off and just be you that's what it's looking for. And how are you finding that at least one time every day? Just like you're finding that engagement one time every day, that positive emotion one time every day. The M in PERMA is my favorite. I don't think I'm supposed to have favorites, but if I was, it's the M, it's meaning making. I love making meaning out of everything. My friend's like, oh my God, Caroline. I know, look at this moment. It's an amazing moment. But how do we start to have, find more meaning? And meaning is your why. It might be that you have a spiritual meaning. It might mean that you just create a meaning for yourself. It can be as simple as there's this cardinal that lives in a tree outside of my house. And every time I see the cardinal, I'm like, ah, thanks universe. And I genuinely have this moment where I'm like, the universe is here with me today because I've just created meaning out of it. It may be a reflection. It may be that you did get the F and you panicked and you weren't kind to yourself. And then when you were talking to your best friend and they're like, you need to be kinder to yourself. You're like, I do need to be kinder to myself. That reminds me of self-compassion. <gasps> yes, that was meaning making. Anytime that you create connections in your life to come out and have a better why, a better understanding of who you are, that growth, that self-actualization. And then finally, when you're reflecting, again, you have your PERMA, you can take this with you right now. This is a tangible thing that you can do to create more joy in your life. It's researched to say this makes people happier when they think about these things is accomplishment. Now, I have a little bit of a tricky relationship with accomplishment. And it's because we live in a capitalist society that is always telling us accomplishment is the only way to feel fulfilled. And as we already seen, there are four other ways and so I always tell people, don't focus too much on this A. But yes, the accomplishments is having goals, a drive in life to help us achieve things and feel purposeful. Of course, we want to have those. But then again, how do we reflect on them? And what this is, and especially for all of you out there who may have a little bit of that just perfectionism in you, it's saying, how do we celebrate our successes? How do we reflect? Because half the time, and we know this from the research around feedback. When you get feedback from someone, even if they tell you 99 beautiful things about you, we focus on the one bad thing. 
It's our brains. They have a negative propensity. We can access those failures and those problems. And so with this accomplishment piece of PERMA, it's really about saying, hey, I did make a B. And you know what? I'm proud of myself for that. I made an A. I'm proud of myself for that. I showed up for coffee with a friend, even though I wanted to sleep in and hit snooze. I'm proud of myself for that. It's finding those accomplishments and things that aren't just the overarching big societal prescription accomplishments, but it's the little things. It could even be, I took the trash out or I wanted to cook something and I actually sat in meal prep for the first time. And then how do you reflect on it? And I want y'all to think about it in this way, okay? So our brains, if you're actively every day saying, I'm looking for positive emotion, I'm looking for engagement, I'm looking for relationships, I'm looking for meetings, I'm looking for accomplishments so that I can reflect on this, well, you're actually retraining your brain to look for those things first, which means you're going to see more of them. Because how often do we come in, even today, I came into the office here. I'm getting to do this live from the office. It's so fun. And immediately it was like, okay, we got to get lights going. We got to get things going. Up, up, up. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And now, even in this moment right now, I'm starting to make some meaning. I'm like, how cool was it that a group of women came together and were like, we're going to make this happen. We've never done it like this before, but we got it. Okay. We're like unscrewing light bulbs. We're posting things. We're putting things up. We're getting multiple computers. And we made it happen. What an accomplishment in that. And there was lots of positive emotion. There was lots of laughter being like, oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> and yet, so often we just come in, have these kind of moments and then walk out and say, bye, have a good day. And so I'm really encouraging you to stop, reflect, audit your thoughts. Are you giving yourself self-compassion? If you're not there yet, that's okay. Start actively doing PERMA then, because PERMA retrains your brain to see the good, to see the things to be grateful for, to see how much is actually happening in just one day, where we often put our blinders on, walk to class, walk to work, get home, and forget to home. I added this, and it's one of my favorite quotes. And it really, for me, helps remind me that going into the arena, being the person that steps in and says, hey, I'm going to try. And I may fail, but I'm going to try. And I can do that. And if I fail, I'm going to be okay because I'm not focused on the self-esteem. I'm focused on the self-compassion. The place to say, hey, at least I did try. At least I stepped in. I want to build, find that positive emotion and that engagement and the relationships and the meaning and the accomplishment of every single day because it's happening for us. I don't know if y'all saw Adam Grant wrote a really neat article on something called languishing. And it was this new emotion of feeling meh, where you're not fully depressed, but you're not also actively joyful. We're just going through the motions. And so, so many of us experience languishing during this pandemic, and we're still maybe experiencing it. And so for me, when I think about PERMA and trying something like that and saying, you know what? I'm just going to do it for seven days. Can I just try it for seven days? I can do anything for seven days. I'm going to go into the arena. I'm going to try it. And maybe every night, for, some nights I forget, some nights I remember. And I'm going to try it because I want to actively say, I have the power over my thoughts and emotions. I can create joy. So I'm going to read this to y'all. And I hope that you really listen right now. Think about the words that you connect with. Think about which person you are. Are you the person on the outside looking in? Or are you the person jumping in and trying everything they can to say, I want to self-actualize. I want to be the one with the growth mindset, jumping in and trying it all. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, 
and sweat and blood, who strives val valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort, because there is no effort without error and shortcomings, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the end best knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory or defeat. For me, being a female entrepreneur, being a UT alum, it's about diving in. It's about saying, I'm going to try. I'm not going to be one of those cold and timid souls, being the critic on the outside, pointing at other people, saying, this is what you've done wrong, this is what you've done wrong. I'm going to be the person that's jumping in. And I'm going to say there is going to be failure. There is going to be sadness. There is going to be grief and shame and jealousy and embarrassment. But I know great enthusiasms. I have great devotions. I can use self-compassion. I can use that PERMA model to say there is so much more going in your life, Karen, than that one piece of feedback. What about those 99 other things? I wanted to take a few minutes now. I'm not sure what time we're at. <laughs> Amazing. I wanted to take a few minutes now to see what questions that you have. Um, if there's anything that I can help with as a coach and a clinician. Do any of y'all have anything that you want to share or questions about the PERMA model or self-compassion? No? Anybody? All right. Well, then I would love for everyone right now in the chat box to think about PERMA, to think about this. Can you go back to the amazing? Yes. So we have the positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishments. And I want to challenge each of y'all in the chat box right now to pick one of these letters, be vulnerable and be brave, and share something that you had today. One of these things that you experienced today with the group. Are y'all willing to do that? I hope so. I'm gonna pull up my chat box now. I don't see any yet, but I'm gonna start. I drank coffee this morning in a mug, hot, first hot cup of coffee that I've had because it was cool enough to enjoy it. And it was such a positive emotion and I felt amazing. What else? Tessa, where are you at? Ashley, Raquel. <laughs> yes, relationship, that genuine to be myself, to just be who I am. I can complain, I can giggle, I can be silly. I love it, thank you. Relationships are everything. Yes. Hannah. Yes, a connection with a stranger. That is always so fun. Positive emotion. I made a rainbow smoothie this morning. Colorful fruits and veggies. Mm. Yum. I need some fruits and veggies. I've been eating a lot of candy and popcorn lately. That's amazing. And so when we can think about something like a smoothie, right? We all have those moments. We made a smoothie, great. It was delicious. But when we reflect back on it, the reflection is where the change happens. 
I can't say that enough. The reflection is where the change happens. And so first we have to have that self-compassion when we're reflecting with ourselves and then giving ourselves that self-compassion and then reflecting on our everyday life. I stopped and enjoyed the meaning of a moment earlier tonight with my 17 month old son. He hugged my husband inside and looked over and gave me the sweetest smile. Oh, I savored the meeting and it was so good. I got chills. Yes, that is beautiful. Taking a second, right? How often in our society, in our achievement, goal oriented, productivity, efficiency society, do we just say, oh, sweet smile, gotta go, gotta make dinner, gotta finish my to do list? It's beautiful. Tessa, you went thrifting today. Yes, I also find a lot of flow in thrifting where I'm just doing this. And you're going through all of those articles of clothing and you're just in it. We journaled this morning to reflect. Oh, way, bravo. You're already journaling. Add perma, add perma. That is amazing. You recently moved to California. Oh, cool. Oh, you're welcome, Tessa. Bye. Um, well, it has been an honor to get to share with y'all. And I hope that you take this self-compassion, the idea of actualization and the idea of PERMA with you. And if you have any other questions, I am an alum here. I would love to talk to y'all. You can get my email. Um, and I would love to share just about my experiences, hear about your experiences, whatever you need. Are there any other questions or thoughts that I can help with this evening before we go? All right. Well, it seems like we are good, Ashley. Okay. Thank you all so much. I so appreciated coming out today. Um, again, my name is Caroline Crawford. There are the slides. Yes, yes. You got this, ladies. Self-compassion, find that self-love. Remember, it's not just the manicure and the ice cream, even though that's the good stuff too. It is about aligning your values. It's about being kind to yourself. You're welcome. All right, well, have a good one. Peace out and hook them. Bye.